Again, welcome to all of you. It's wonderful to see a, a, a room filled um, uh, with people who are really wanting to make a difference in health and health care in our state. I'd like to start out, um, I know some of, we have some of the award winners, and I'm not sure there may be others that I'm, I'm not aware of, but, but the, I want to mention again the winners from, from last year, and if you're here, if you just please stand just briefly enough so people can recognize you. I mentioned this earlier, but the winner of last year's Health Care Executive Award was Dr. Mary Jo Cagle. So again, uh, we're sent an award winner to North Carolina. We're waiting for our draft pick. Um, the Caregiver Award went to Dr. Robert Adams. I don't know he's, I don't believe he's here with us today, but he's um, been a pioneer with the Stroke um, Center of Economic Excellence and the, and the Stroke uh, Telemedicine System. Susan McWilliams, is Susan here with us today? Susan was uh, also recognized as a caregiver. And then sitting at this table, same table as Mary Jo, is Jan Vick. And she received the uh, Advocacy Award last year um, and is with SACOM Voices for Patient Safety and is with the other patient advocates that are here, really are the, the heart and soul of what we're trying to, to, to accomplish here in South Carolina. And I want to thank all who are here who have experienced the devastating effects of, of uh, medical error and unintended patient harm. And thank you personally for the sacrifices you're making to help us get better and do a better job in South Carolina. Are there any other award winners from previous years that I did not recognize? Pat White, please stand. Um, from Anderson, a real pioneer with, um, with medication safety and has a wonderful story to tell there. Who else we had? Donna Isket. Where's Donna? Hey, Donna. Healthcare Executive Award winner and uh, actually one of the co-chairs now of our reengineering health group with Bruce Bailey. Did I miss anybody else? Well, um, what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to um, ask uh, our uh, first Helen. I hate to do this. All those, those uh, Helen and all the symposium sponsors are going to have to stop in the middle of their, of their meal. But I'm going to ask uh, Helen to come up and do some introductory comments. And I'd also like to go ahead and ask David Dodge from uh, PHTS, Dr. Jay Moskowitz from Health Sciences South Carolina, and Thornton Kirby from the South Carolina Hospital Association to join us on stage as the other sponsors, along with Mothers Against Medical Error, for both this symposium and this um, uh, Lewis Blackman Patient Safety Champion Award. We started this program with these partners, um, led by Helen on behalf of her son, uh, four years ago when we started the symposium. And I will tell you the number of nominations and the uh, amazing stories that we have seen in those nominations has grown every year. It's just wonderful to get a chance to, to see the work that's being done. And we hope as we go in future years, we'll see even more nominations. And we, at this time, would like to go ahead and, uh, and introduce this, this, year, this year's winners. And I'm going to turn it over to Helen. Um, well, thank you, Rick. Um, I guess we need to get right down to it. It is my pleasure to announce the winners of the um, Lewis Blackman Patient Safety Champion Awards this year. Um, so when I call your name, if you could just please come forward to accept your award. Um, have, have we got the awards? <laughs> Just one second. I, I'm not seeing the awards. I'll, I'll help. Oh, oh, they're right here. Yeah. Okay. Let's get them a little higher up on the. I thought they'd be on the table. Okay. Um, so the recipient of the the caregiver award this year, um, we have traditionally had three awards, one to a caregiver, one to a healthcare executive, and one to a patient advocate. Um, and, and this year's caregiver award is um, unique in 
two respects. One is that it actually is a team of people, not just an individual. Um, and the other is for really, it's, it's truly remarkable um, accomplishments. Um, over the past three years, one of the most dynamic and successful quality improvement acts in uh, efforts in South Carolina and across the nation has been the South Carolina Mission Lifeline, um, headed by Eric, Dr. Eric Powers. Um, and I would like to ask them to come forward, Dr. Powers, to come forward to accept the award on behalf of the Mission Lifeline. This program has brought together health professionals from all across our state to create regional systems of care for heart attack patients. Um, it's been an extremely collaborative program with caregivers ranging from EMS dispatchers to paramedics to ED nurses and doctors, cath lab staff, cardiologists, um, patients. And the average time from hospital arrival to interventional treatment for patients with the most severe STEMI heart attacks has been reduced by over 30 minutes, um, as I think you've heard earlier today. Um, so now we are consistently ranked among the top five states nationally for STEMI care. And leading this effort has been Dr. Powers. Um, so please join me in honoring Dr. Powers and South Carolina Mission Lifeline. Thank you very much. It's really a privilege to accept this award on behalf of all of the partners in the South Carolina Heart Attack Network. You heard a little bit about that. Um, heart attack care has been kind of a passion of mine for my whole career. And, in 2000, and I think about 2006, uh, Rick Foster and the, Heart and the Hospital Association had this idea of making South Carolina the best state for heart attack care in the country. That looked to me like it was a winning um, idea, and I jumped on board. Uh, I think it's one of, the first, uh, one, of the, one of the first to jump on board with that program. Since that time, there are multiple partners that have been involved. I guess it must be thousands of people and I'm talking about the Heart, American Heart Association, American College of Cardiology, um, all of the hospitals in South Carolina who do emergency care for heart attacks, doing angioplasty and opening arteries, the hospitals that send patients to those hospitals. I should say the EMS providers have been the, an absolute critical, if not maybe the single most important catalyst for a lot of this. So that this has been, as, there are other partners as well, DHEC, um, and I'm the uh, emergency physicians and, 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 and many others. So I don't want to take a lot of time except just to recognize all of these people who have been involved in this. When I, um, when I came to South Carolina in uh, 2005, uh, we were just about average for heart attack care across the country. Uh, and uh, I, and uh, I can tell you now that we are like number three in the country um, and very close to number one. When I came here in 2005, I learned an expression called, thank God for Mississippi. Have you all heard about that? <laughs> right, right. Well, well, the new expression is, is, I think, is what it's New Hampshire and Minnesota get out of our way, right? Because we're, <laughs> because we're number three and we're gonna be, we're gonna be number one. Let, let me just. And let me just say to finish up is that we, there's still a lot of work to do with heart attack care, but the whole team now is, is focusing on other cardiovascular projects as well, and it's our expectation, our plan to, in those areas to be a national leader as well. So again, thank you very much. Thank you to the group that made all this possible, and I greatly appreciate this award. Thank you. Our um, Healthcare Executive Award this year goes to Dr. Sean Stinson. Um, 
He is Vice President of Clinical Quality and Patient Safety at Palmetto Health. Um, and Dr. Stenson actively serves the healthcare community and many healthcare committees and boards, including the um, South Carolina Hospital Quality Association, Reengineering Team, Adverse Events Response, um, Infection Prevention, and Organizing for Health. Um, He's chair of the Quality Improvement Council, representing Health Sciences South Carolina on the health, South Carolina Healthcare Quality Trust, an associate professor of clinical internal medicine at the USC School of Medicine. Um, he, his strong leadership in guiding healthcare in South Carolina in, is guiding healthcare in South Carolina into a new era of quality and patient safety. He's led an effort to implement CPOE, Computer Provider Order Entry, order entry an in initiative to improve, reduce medication errors across the Palmetto Health System. Um, Sean is, is perhaps best known for his efforts at reducing mortality in the Palmetto Health System. When Palmetto Health leadership and staff learned of the overall mortality rate for their patients in 2006, Dr. Stinson um, and the other health, Palmetto Health leaders um, reduced their standard mortality rate by 50%, is that correct, Sean? Over 50%, using measurement tools such as um, a dashboard for performance comparison. And for that, he has become, uh, Palmetto Health has really become sort of a poster child for IHI, I've heard Don Berwick um, mentioned them in several speeches. So, we want to thank Dr. Stenson for his leadership, dedication, and drive to improve patient safety for all patients in South Carolina. Thank you. But Thank you very much, and, and thank you for uh, uh, allowing me to be here and to make this possible. Uh, I have to tell you that uh, that those of you who know me, that you know, that particularly those I work with at Palmetto Health, know that I'm a fraud. That you know, we have uh, uh, amazing leadership from our CEO, our CMO, our uh, other uh, leadership team, but the real work is done by the people in the quality department, and even more importantly, the frontline staff. Uh, our nursing leadership, and this is hard as a physician to say this, but our nursing leadership is truly amazing. And so far, most of what we have done has been on the backs of the nurses. Our next phase is going to be to really get the physicians involved. But n none of it would, would really, I think we would have had the success that we've had if it weren't for, we, we have a, a committee that we have really strong patient leadership on that. And, uh, you know, which Palmetto Health came together bringing hospitals with different cultures. We sometimes, each hospital felt like we could do it best and we would argue with one another. And to, to have a patient in the room that says, you guys are talking about the wrong thing, you know, this really about me or my family, uh, it was very grounding. So if any of you need a jump start and you're not already doing it, I would invite uh, Helen or Jan uh, or any of your patients, but they can give you great recommendations to come on there. You need somebody who uh, uh, is uh, uh, willing to speak up and willing to not have just their own personal agenda, but just to look at the system as a whole. So, uh, Helen, thank you very much. Thank you. Well. This is one that is near to my heart. This year's Advocacy Award, Patient Advocate Award, goes to um, my friend, Teresa Arnold, um, AARP's Legislative Director. And I, I just want to say that Teresa is um, one of the few people, she has been by our side from the, the beginning of our patient safety journey, which began 10 years ago with the death of my son, Lewis. 
She actually is the first Lewis Blackman winner to have a, a personal connection with, with my family. Her son was a friend and classmate of Lewis's. Her husband, Randy, was his geography coach at Hand Middle School. Um, Teresa helped us pass the Lewis Blackman Act, which was sort of my entry into um, patient safety in South Carolina, and she helped us ensure that it was implemented. She was a moving force in helping the Hospital Infection Disclosure Act of 2006 get funding and become one of our country's most successful and well-respected infection disclosure laws. Um, she has sat on the, the HIDA committee for five years to great effect. She has sponsored, um, she sponsored training for nurses for infection control in association with the HIDA Act. And she sponsored patient training for AARP members from throughout the states on how to um, keep themselves safe in the hospital. She's kept patient safety in the forefront with her AARP volunteers. And this is all in addition to the more general health care measures that she ha her support has really been key to as a legislative um, director at AARP. And those really are just too numerous to mention. <laughs> so, you know, in the... I see all the AARP people sitting at a table in front of me, and I want to say this award is for all of AARP because they have been such a support to patient safety in South Carolina. Um, I, I, I'm just so glad that you all have been there. And Teresa has been um, a, a moderator in a lot of the, the patient safety debates. She's been a peacemaker, a force for compromise. Um, she's brought people together. Um, and one example is the um, South Carolina Mission Lifeline. Teresa was sort of critical in getting patient support for that and, and the person of Jan Vick, which I think has been in turn critical to its success. Um, so I want to thank Teresa for her wisdom, her generosity, and her dedication to principle over all these years. I just don't know how this patient safety movement would have looked without her. Thank you, Teresa. Well, thank you all. I feel um, completely unworthy of this. Uh, the reason I'm up here is because of Helen Haskell and Jan Vick, who are the best patient advocates anywhere around and uh, have always prodded me to do the right thing. <laughs> and I just want to thank you all for being here. I am phenomenally impressed with how much progress South Carolina's hospitals have made on patient safety. Um, I have had several very sick family members over the years who've been in hospitals, and in the last few years, I've seen so much evidence of even uh, the alcohol, hand wash things. When my brother had his pancreatic kidney transplant in the MUSC in Charleston, I was able to wipe down his entire room because there were so, much, so many of those alcohol things around, <laughs> which I understand is a fire hazard, but you know we have to keep fighting for the things we believe in. Thank you all so very much. I, I, I just feel like this is so wonderful to have something like this because of Lewis Blackman. And finally, this year, um, I told you this was a special Lewis Blackman Awards, and, and, and this is one of the reasons. This year marks the inauguration of a very special award, um, which has a, a deep meaning to me personally, and that is our new Lewis Blackman Student Champion of Patient Safety Award. Um, just by way of background, my son died at the age of 15, 10 years ago. Um, he was a really high achieving boy. We, we were so proud of him, you know, inordinately proud, I'm sure. But 
this for me has really always been about young people, um, about keeping young people safe and about trying to, to educate the next generation. Um, so I have always, through the years, been able to sort of follow Lewis's friends and see what they were doing and think, well, that's what he would be doing now. I can imagine that. And then once they graduate from college, everybody goes their own way, and you can't do that anymore. Um, and it's been a, a sort of a, um, an ambivalent feeling to start encountering young people his age in the workplace who are, are you know, that I'm working with on various projects, and med medical students, first year residents. Um, but at the same time, that it really gives me a very warm feeling that if he had gone into medicine, that's what he would be doing. And so, this year, our first, our first Lewis Blackman Student Award goes um, to a young man who is Lewis's age, a fourth year medical student at USC, and that is Ross Hilliard. Ross. And I do have a little bit to say about Ross. I've just been talking about Lewis because it was, I don't often get a chance. But um, Ross is actually the inspiration for this award. And he is a shining example of the, the new breed of student that this award is intended to recognize and to encourage. He was a leader um, in starting the U USC chapter of the IHI Open School in 2008. That's an interprofessional education community that was created to give students the skills to become change agents in healthcare improvement. He's been president uh, of the Open School since, it began, since he began it, and he's in that role has helped bring together students of, of many different professions um, to focus on interdisciplinary teamwork and, and patient-centered care. And he has worked with USC faculty to develop a vertical patient safety curriculum that will become part of the USC um, required medical school program this fall. Um, he's been honored by the IHI for his work with the Open School, by honorary societies for his academic performance. And he has been asked to serve on the South Carolina Hospital Association Quality Advisory Council because of his leadership in the student community. And finally, I should say that operating on the theory um, that students always need a little something more than just honor, the student award is accompanied by a $500 honorarium. So thank you. Well. Um, since I was told to say a few things, and I really am humbled to be up here, especially with so many uh, other people who've made such great accomplishments. Those, uh, the list of things there certainly uh, weren't done just by me. Um, certainly, I'd, I'd like to thank the, the mentorship I've gotten from people like Dr. Foster, Dr. Baxley, and Dr. Stinson over the past couple of years as I moved through medical school, as well as the uh, the other students and other faculty, um, Elliot Turner and Stephanie Paulini especially, um, who I've worked with uh, as we got the uh, open school started. It really is remarkable to see students uh, from various health professions come together and learn about this, get started, get fired up about um, patient safety and quality improvement, start thinking outside of their own silos, and it's been a privilege to help uh, break down some of those barriers at South Carolina. So. Uh, thanks to all the people who've helped us as we've gotten started, and if you haven't gotten in touch, try to get in touch with me or Kimberly or Dr. Foster. It would really be great to expand the, uh, the reach of the open school here at USC. Thank you very, very much. Okay. Um, well, I think everyone needs, can just be seated for a special tribute to the winners. We'll, we'll take photographs later. Um, uh, 
I believe that Dr. Foster is supposed to do this part. Okay, so <laughs> I'm sorry, I got confused here. Um, anyway, Dr. Foster will, will introduce our, um, our special yeah. tribute here. Stay up here, Mitchell, I introduce her. Okay. okay, let's do that. Um, I know we're running short on time, but I wanted to make one comment. It, it, there's so many things about the day and tomorrow that gives me great hope, but I have to tell you that one of the things that gives me the most hope is Ross and the other students who become actively involved in open school. And I'll tell you, one of my favorite pictures I have now is a picture of me standing in the middle of all those students. It's obvious who the oldest member of that picture is, my white hair, but it makes me proud and it makes me excited about that um, we have a bright future uh, here in, in South Carolina with leaders like Ross and the other students that he mentioned. It's really exciting and it's wonderful and I'm glad we had the opportunity to, to add this. And with uh, Helen's leadership on that, um, we now have a new award that's been added to recognize those students. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to introduce in just a minute uh, Carolyn Lewis-Jones, who's the Artistic Director of Unbound. But I want to mention briefly, we said, I said uh, that starting last year we really tried to make a commitment to the arts as part of our work here. Um, oh, Tim Floyd, where's Tim? Tim Floyd. The gentleman is exactly opposite to me as far as the hair. <laughs> um, Tim and others from uh, the uh, Palmetto Health System were the inspiration for our grime scene investigator uh, hand hygiene campaign. It's my one opportunity to be on YouTube um, um, <laughs> that I really enjoyed. But he also did the painting that we've got the original painting back out here in the foyer, um, The Edge of Change. And that inspired us to this year. And uh, Ted, if you will stand up, Ted Pickering um, is a structural artist and works with objects that are found anywhere in the community, so to speak and putting them together in a way that really sends a very powerful message. So out, right out here in the lobby, you may have seen it already, he did a very special piece that we commissioned for him called Asclepius Rising, and I'm not going to get into detail right now, we'll have some information about it, but Asclepius was the Greek god of medicine, and was basically the precursor to Hippocrates and the whole concept of first do no harm. And so Ted took this work of art, also connecting back to our, um, the painting that was done last year and the whole idea of transformational change, and I ask you to, when you get a chance to go out and look at this, as we talk about South Carolina ascending from a midst of chaos into a new world of health and health care. So thanks, Ted, for the work that you did. And just like this artistic piece that we're getting ready to see in the dance number, we also hope this, other, this, this sculptural work of art will challenge you to think about health and health care in a different way. And I wanted, wanted to, Helen to stay with me because we're going to introduce... Uh, uh, Caroline Lewis-Jones to come up and she is the artistic director of um, Unbound Dance Company. And the reason I wanted Helen to stay up here, uh, we had a chance to sit down with Caroline and we talked about uh, creating a new piece um, related to the work we're doing and she got a chance to talk with Helen so I, uh, she can go into more detail but I wanted to have the chance before we step down uh, for Helen to still be up here because I think in a lot of respects this number is in honor of Lewis and so many others that have been harmed and trying to do our best to make sure that everyone has a chance to, um, uh, to survive and not have a failure to survival. So, Caroline.